starts with vitamin C, which is a water soluble vitamin. In our class, we will so we we'll look its different sources, the recommended daily allowance, function and deficiency manifestations. The ascorbic acid, otherwise known as antiscorbutic factor or antiscorbutic vitamin. It is water soluble, antioxidant, does not have any active coenzyme, but it is a strong reducing agent. It can be destroyed by heat, alkali, and storage, and the, the vitamin C is also lost after cooking. The, the strong reducing property of vitamin C is being associated with its uh, in diode in the structure. So in some animals, uh, except the humans, primates, guinea pigs, birds, fishes, invertebrates, the vitamin C can be, uh, the ascorbic acid can be synthesized by the uronic acid pathway with the help of the enzyme l gulonolactone oxidase. The l ascorbic acid can undergo oxidation and form dehydroascorbic acid Biologically, both the L ascorbic acid and L dehydro ascorbic acid are active, and their existence in the ratio in tissues is 15 is to 1, but the D ascorbic acid is inactive. Now, in adults, the daily recommend of vitamin C is around 75 mg per day, which can be satisfied if you take a daily 50 ml of orange juice. During pregnancy and lactation, the requirement is increases, that is around 100 mg per day. The plasma concentration is around 0.4 to 1.5 mg per situation. If you uh, consume more than 2 grams of uh, vitamin C, then it can, uh, the, the iron overload takes place can, uh, because Vitamin C is required for the absorption of The different source of uh, vitamin C is found in plants and animals, mainly the citrus fruits, amla, goa, berries, tomatoes, leafy vegetables. Animals, it is found in the liver, kidney, and adrenal products. So, mainly absorbed from intestine. So, whatever, since it is a water soluble vitamin, it is not stored in the body, the excess will be excreted. The oxidation is rapid in, my, uh, in, in presence of copper. So, when we uh, cook food in a copper vessel, the vitamin C becomes inactive. So coming to the biochemical functions of vitamin C, the major function is involved in the biosynthesis of collagen. So it is used for the post-translation, post hydroxylation of proline and lysine residues during the uh, collagen biosynthesis. And these uh, hydroxylations are very essential uh, for the cross-linking and tensile and the strength of collagen fiber. So, uh, the vitamin C is very important for the measurements of normal connective tissue and wound healing process. Second, it is required for the functional activities of connective tissues, osteoid of bone, dendrite of teeth, intracellular cement substance of capillaries, and the vitamins in the wound healing. Then, uh, it is required for the cellular oxidation reduction reactions. So, it is also associated with the metabolism of tyrosine, tryptophan and uh, it enhances the iron absorption by converting ferric iron to ferrous iron. It is required for the hemoglobin metabolism, has a strong antioxidant property and hence it, uh, it acts as an effective scavenger for the free radicals and may help uh, prevent the cancer. So it is again, it is required for the hydro Hydroxylation reactions of steroids during steroid synthesis. Uh, this is for the synthesis of norepinephrine from dopamine and also required for the enzymes of carbapyl synthesis. Again, it's requirement for the synthesis of viral acids from cholesterol. Uh, the active form of alcoholic acid is tetrahydrochloric acid and vitamin C help uh, the folic acid to 
heat in the reduced form and is necessary for the normal growth, growth and maturation of harvest. Prevents the formation of cataracts. Again, vitamin C uh, reduces the risk of coronary heart diseases and enhances the synthesis of immunoglobulin and stimulates uh, phagocytic action. So major deficiency, coming to the deficiency part, the major deficiency of vitamin C is scurvy. The symptoms of scurvy is related to the deficient collagen formation and because the hydroxylation forms of the proline and lysine are uh, not being synthesized, that results in the weakening of collagen fibers. So the capillaries become fragile, which leads to the tendency to bleed even under minor pressure. So if there is a delay, wound healing, internal bleeding, anemia, swollen joints, and aching muscles. If not treated, the scurvy can uh, again worsen, and the severe cases of scurvy affects the skeletal changes, oral changes, there is an oral change. If you look into the skeletal changes, there is a painful swelling of the joints, impaired bone growth, osteoporosis, failure of ossification. Failure of osteoblastic fu function, bone becomes weak and fractures, fractures easily. Self-restore bleeding and hemorrhaging joints. So if you see the oral part, there is a spongy and uh, sore gums and the bleeding of the gums and uh, even after slight friction. There is a poor bone healing, loss of teeth, mucosal petechiae, ecchymosis, etc. And uh, it also affects the blood vessels and skin. There is a change in the skin. So, blood vessels, how, let's see how it affects the capillaries become weak, easily bleeding, gets easily bleeding, hematuria, melina, epistas, conjunctiva, and the nails. The splinter, there is a splinter hemorrhage. Skin, you can see hair loss, perifollicular, hyperkeratotic, keratoid uh, papules, and both from hair. Microcystic hypochromic anemia, it is mainly due to the poor absorption of iron and there is a continuous blood loss. The infantile scurvy of Barnes disease are uh, common, common in among the infants at the age of at the age, between 6 to 12 months of age when weaning gets started and the, the diet, the, there is a the deficient supplement of vitamin C. So treatment uh, for deficient, uh, during deficiency has to be treated by supplementing vitamin C, mainly as in the form of fresh fruits and vegetables, and or even as a capsule vitamin C supplement, the advised uh, amount is 500 milligrams per day until it gets better. So thank you all for today's class. Thank you.